Let's take a look at a power chord based on the notes that you've learned on the sixth string. So the most common way to play a power chord is to just add one other finger. So what you'll do is you'll find the note that is the name of the chord. So say your A power chord, you'll play the A, which is on the fifth fret with your index finger. You're going to see what finger feels the most comfortable to play the second note. So for me, that's my ring finger. And that note is on the seventh fret of the fifth string. So you'll see there's one fret in between. So we're using fingers one and three on frets five and seven. Do not use your second finger. Don't use that one. You don't wanna stretch that much between two fingers. If it's really hard for you to put down your third finger, you're, you can use your little finger for now, your fourth finger, and then the stretch will come. So if you can use your third finger, great. If not, go ahead and use your fourth. What you're gonna do with your picking hand is you're going to strum down, but you can only hit the strings that you're fretting. So you can only hit strings six and five. You're going to strum down on a diagonal, and then right after you play that fifth string, you're gonna turn up just a little bit, like you're opening that door knob. So it looks like this. It feels like a bit of a flick when you do it. That's your A5 power chord. It's called A5. That's how you'll see it in the chart. So what we're going to do is try a set of chords. It's a really common order of chords, and it was famously used in a Beatles song. The chords are D5, D power chord, A power chord, A5, and G5. That means that you're going to the 10th fret, put down your index finger, and put your Third finger on the 12th fret, there's your D5 chord. Just play that until it feels comfortable. Then you're gonna look ahead at the fifth fret and you're going to take off the pressure that you have down on the D power chord and you're going to slide it to the A power chord. And you'll notice that the frets over here closer to the body are smaller. So as you shift, you have to open up your hand just a little bit. So see if you can manage that. And then put it down on the A power chord, which is frets five and seven. So here we go. And then the third one we're going to do in a row is to G. So you're going to slide, take your pressure off, slide your fingers, to the third fret and the fifth fret. There's your G power chord. And don't forget to breathe as you do this. So here it goes again, D, A, G. One more time, D, a and G. And then the chorus of the song, that part adds the B power chord in. So that goes B, which is on seven and nine, those frets. Slide it down to A, which is based on the fifth fret. slide it down to G, which is based on the third fret. And then you're gonna go back up to A. So it goes B on seven, slide back to A based on the fifth fret, and then slide back to G based on the third fret, and then up to A again. What we're going to do is take a look at the chart now that once you get the shifting down, you feel pretty comfy with the chords and take your time. In the chart, it's kind of great because you have four bars of D. So we're just going to hit the D power chord and count to four each time. So this is the first line of the, of the song. I 
was silently counting to four each time. I was going D, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. D. You can use your metronome for that. You can set a tempo. The trick is gonna be after the fourth D chord, you have to make it to the A chord. So what I'm going to do is I'll conduct myself a little bit so you can see my beat. And you'll see that after I hit that D chord the fourth time, I'm going to move my hand so that right when the A chord is supposed to happen, I'm on that chord, okay? So here it goes. So I'm gonna count like one, two, three, four. The next chord I go to after hitting A twice is I go to G, the last chord in our verse. So then I'm gonna stop the string. So D four times, then A twice, G once. So each time they get four counts. Here it goes again. One, two, three, four. What you'll see is that as you go, you won't need to leave as much time before the shift to make it to the next chord. In the beginning, it's okay to leave some space because the rest of the band or your friends that you're playing with, they're gonna help you. And what's really important is to get there when you're supposed to get there. But eventually you'll be able to do a shift like this. That's because you'll be coordinated with your emotions and you'll trust yourself. So the most important thing, find your notes, make your chord comfortable, look ahead, shift to your eyes, get there on time, and don't forget to breathe. <laughs> it's a lot of steps, but just take your time. Go step by step and, and it'll get easier and easier as you go.